Look back to a great era. See steam power, both large and small, that was used on the SP in the early to mid-1950s. We extensively cover the San Francisco Peninsula to San Jose and Los Gatos, plus many other locations. There was a large group of 4882 cab ahead locomotives still in service and formerly glamorous daylight passenger locomotives that were reassigned to freight duty as the premier passenger trains were dieselizing. Remember the Oakland Mole that served numerous SP ferry boats and many passenger and mail trains. We cover some fan trip trains on the Altamont Pass that was shared with the Western Pacific's own tracks. Recall how there were so many railroad structures and line side artifacts that no longer exist on modern railroad lines that have been stripped bare of anything resembling these old days. This material was shot by four of the most talented and artistic cinematographers back in these times. See the early diesels during the mid-1950s that would soon push steam out of any assignments, one by one. This made viewing, writing, and filming these a priority that could not be missed. We review many of the GS-class locomotives and their history. This fantastic material has waited for up to 70 years to be a part of your viewing. Visit Busy San Jose and see typical locomotive preparations and take a memorable fan trip up to Altamont Pass and beyond. This is Niles SP Station across Alameda Creek from the Western Pacific tracks. These separate lines are both on the verge of Niles Canyon, and they both run crossing and recrossing each other up to Altamont Pass. And what a wonderful place Altamont was with its railroad camp complete with living quarters. We bring back the third in Townsend station that had morning and evening rush hour commute trains between San Francisco and San Jose. This was an intense operation and at peak times the trains leaving both cities left in three minute intervals. We review the old commute coaches of the distant days and the newer 1950s bi-level cars. We bring the Fairbanks Morris Trainmaster diesels that in 1953 were way ahead of the other diesels in many ways. These would run during the late steam era and long into the 1970s when steam was a faded memory. Steam power still clung to life on the peninsula until 1957, and when the trains like the Coast Daylight dieselized, these four A84 Northerns ran out their years on commute train service. Here an FM Trainmaster in its original colors pulls the new 1950s bi-level commute cars. With our maps, you won't be guessing about where scenes are located and in what order. We also bring the GP9 diesels, introduced in 1954 by EMD. Some of these were outfitted with features to support passenger duty. Steam ran here for a few more years and it pulled passenger, mail, and freight trains. After fans witnessed the retirement of all regular steam by 1957, they would eventually see all of the train masters retired by 1975. Not one of these was saved from the scrap dealers. That makes all these scenes the more important. Another service lost to the past, trains that served Los Gatos. These rare views began at Mayfield Cutoff. Some of these scenes look like a Norman Rockwell magazine cover painting, complete with a kid on a Schwinn bike that waits around the station. We stop at Los Gatos Station, and the train backs out to Vasona Junction, and then continues on to San Jose. SP had a sizable fleet of ferry boats built around 1900 that ran passengers between San Francisco and Oakland. These tied up at the Oakland Mole, and we have several visits there. 
This sprawling facility was all built on landfill. Some of SP's finest trains originated here, such as the City of San Francisco over Donner Pass, the San Joaquin Daylight, and the Shasta Daylight, and a number of secondary passenger and mail trains that also used this complex. We visit the Oakland 16th Street Station area and Berkeley Station to see some of these great trains. Then we see extensive action with all the great variety of freight, mail, and passenger trains around the greater East Bay area to the north. Trains such as 246 here to Sacramento, and they abound in this section of our East Bay nostalgia. After Berkeley, we visit Albany, Richmond, and beautiful places out to Crockett to see lots of freight trains and a few more passenger trains, all under steam power in the 1950s. Next, we extensively travel on the Northwestern Pacific that was a Southern Pacific subsidiary line that went 284 miles north to Eureka, California. We ride and follow passenger trains three and four, as well as some rail fan trips in the days of steam that all ended by 1954 up here. The picture and sound quality is amazing. One of our stops is at Willits and its junction with the lumber loads from California Western Railroad. Then we ride down the line in a time when there were numerous stations and things of interest to historians and rail fans alike. Nearly all of this brings back things that have vanished from the entire scene down to Willits, other than sections of rails that are washed out or buried by nature's wrath. By 1954, steam was all replaced here and trains three and four from San Rafael to Eureka were dieselized and equipped with newer passenger cars. See some of the wild and challenging landscape that required not only great engineering, but constant repair from nature's destructive forces over the decades. This section has incredible scenery that was in our mind California's greatest rail adventure. This was the last service that went from Eureka to Willits with a single RDC self-powered rail car until it too stopped running in 1971. See some pre-Amtrak SP trains in their last years and share this great experience back in a number of decades from 1948 to 1973. If you lived in these times, you can see it all again. If you missed these times, you have a second opportunity to finally see some great history in the making.